In today's video, we're going over how Tiger Woods did not mince words when he criticized the Live Golf series in a speech on Tuesday before the British Open in St. Andrews. He questioned why young players would sign up for the Saudi-sponsored circuit when it is still unknown whether they'll be able to compete in big tournaments in the future. He claimed it's a major risk with very little long-term reward. First off, Woods recovering and finally speaking out about Live. Woods has been pushing himself to finally be healthy enough to compete in the 150th Open this week. While he recovers from severe leg injuries sustained in an unfortunate car accident last year, the golfing megastar was critical of the new series and questioned why anyone would even bother taking part in it despite the guaranteed amounts of money involved. Woods said that he objects to that. When asked about his fellow pros who would have been enticed to join the contentious tour, which is being led by Aussie icon Greg Norman, Woods had some strong words words to say. He claimed that he thinks what they've done is they've turned their back on what has allowed them to reach this position in the first place, clearly implying that they would be nothing without the PGA. The golfing star went on to say, who knows what will happen with world ranking points or even the entry requirement for major tournaments in the near future. He believes that some of these athletes might never have the opportunity to compete in important championships ever again. While we also believe that this may happen, we agree that there is still much uncertainty about that. The two-time British Open winner was not invited by the organizers to this week's past champion events at St. Andrews. Woods claimed to be aware that Greg attempted to organize a breakaway tour in the early 1990s too, which didn't materialize to this extent. He's apparently attempting to make it work now because it didn't work before. Woods continued saying that he still doesn't understand how this move is best for the game. Secondly, some words about Norman. Woods is of the opinion that the way regulatory organizations of the game, the major events, and what the European Tour and PGA Tour stand for, and have accomplished, aren't aligned with how Norman perceives the game of golf. The golfer went on to say that Greg has taken some actions that aren't ideal for golf, and that returning to what is arguably the most historic location, it was the proper decision to not invite Greg Norman. Despite the PGA Tour and DP World Tour attempting to prohibit them, British British Open organizers followed the US Open's example and permitted live golfers to compete at St. Andrews. As a result, Thursday's opening round at St. Andrews will feature four-time major champion Brooks Kopka, Sergio Garcia, Bryson DeChambeau, Dustin Johnson, and former Open champion Phil Mickelson. The Live Tour will conduct a board meeting at the birthplace of golf on Wednesday to demand official status in the world rankings, according to The Guardian. The decision of any application from the Saudi Act series would be made by representatives of the four major tournaments, the PGA Tour and the DP World Tour, among others. Players connected to the Live Series who do not receive ranking points may have a harder time competing in major tournaments in the future. All of the major championship organizations are responsible for deciding that. The three-time Open champion who also won at St. Andrews in 2000 and 2005 noted that it is possible that some players would never ever get the chance to play in a major event or to experience a walk down the fairways at Augusta National ever again. Coming up, what drives live players away? Woods, who has won 15 major championships and shares the lead with Sam Snead with 82 PGA Tour victories, joked aloud on whether the Live Series' generous prize packages may deter players from ever trying to compete. He asked what the incentive to practice even is. If players are getting guaranteed boatloads of money, what even motivates people to work in the mud to earn a living. The 54 whole events in the series, which is supported by the Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund and supported by Greg Norman, provides record prize money of $36 million. The $20 million in total prizes were awarded at this week's Open. Woods stated that live players are just getting paid a lot of money up front and playing a few tournaments and 54 holes. In particular, if the live organization doesn't receive world ranking points and the major tournaments adjust their entry requirements, he simply doesn't see how this move is 
helpful in the long run for a lot of these players. Other news. Next up, what price have Live players had to pay? Members who participated in the very first Grand Saudi funded Live Golf Invitational Series event were indefinitely barred from three tournaments and fined an insane $177,000 each by the DP World Tour on recently leading up to the weekend. Sergio Garcia, Lee Westwood, and even the likes of Ian Poulter all participated in the event held outside of London earlier this month, even though they had not been given permission to do so by the tour initially, which by the way was formerly known as the European Tour. Minutes after the first tournament finally began, the US PGA Tour issued a ban to its players. While the DP World Tour took longer to take a stance on the matter, many fans and officials of the sport have speculated that they would take a calmer approach than the PGA. However, claiming a violation of the rules, the tour has now imposed sanctions, including bans from the upcoming Scottish Open, the Barbasol Championship, and even the Barracuda Championship, all of whom are standing by Monaghan's stance and co-sanctioning players alongside the PGA Tour. These sanctions also include massive six-figure fines, which sound like a lot, sure, but Liv's lucrative financial packages for players are definitely going to be cushioning this fall in a big way. The DP World Tour also warned that participation in any further Live Golf events, the next of which begins in Portland, Oregon the following week, could result in even more sanctions for players beyond this. From a glance, we're unsure how many players are even going to comply, and if you ask us, this could even shape up to turn into some really messy court proceedings as well, but you'll just have to stay tuned as we continue to cover how this story develops. Coming up next, where does Jack Nicklaus stand? Given that he was allegedly offered millions of dollars to support the Saudi Arabia-backed series, he may have good reason to be apprehensive of this Rebel Live series. Instead, Greg Norman is the focal point of everything Live, which is why the R&A chose not to invite the Australian to this week's previous champion events. To be quite honest with you, I don't know anything about it, Niklaus said in reference to the dispute between Norman and the R&A. The golfing star claimed to have very little knowledge of what transpired. In fact, he said he was fully aware that they chose not to invite Norman, but he had no further information to give out at this time. Niklaus provided just a little more information when he was asked if Norman's reputation had suffered as a result of his live affiliation and endorsement. The 18-time major champion said that he would like to just sum this situation up with a couple of sentences. Niklaus stated that Greg Norman is a legend in the sport of golf to start. He's also undoubtedly a superb athlete as well. The two have known one another for a very long time, and no matter what, they'll always be buddies, according to the star. Unfortunately, he believes that Norman and him simply don't agree on what's happening, and that there's nothing more to say beyond that. Just to make sure the press don't pester him further, he decided to stop right there and clearly communicated how he felt when he told the press not to ask him about this ever again. Coming up, Norman talks back to his loud critics. As the US Open week finally came to an end, Norman, who is the public face of the contentious Saudi Arabia-sponsored Live Golf series, spoke with Fox News One Nation with Brian Kilmeade to make his stance clear and clear up some rumors. He retaliated against the several PGA-affiliated detractors of Live Golf, including the likes of famous sports analyst Bob Costas, who recently claimed that Norman and other golfers he assisted in luring away, such as Phil Mickelson, are receiving blood money. A pretty bold claim by Costas, who didn't go any further to support this claim by further statements or any evidence regarding this, Norman reportedly stated that he's honestly pretty unhappy when individuals of any background, sports or otherwise, try to go down that road. This statement comes quoted courtesy of USA Today, sports, who are covering the matter. Norman went further to state that if such critics of his and the players at live want to view the entire situation through a narrow prism, then he's got some pointers that he'd love their honest opinions on. That's a wrap for this video. How hard do you think Woods was on the Saudi back tour? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.